Are you ready for brains? Brain! This is the zombie's favorite unit. <laughs> <laughs> where we're going to talk about brains. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with our outside of the brain, right? And right now we're basically looking flat dab on to the cerebrum. Okay, so the cerebrum, you notice, has lots of indentations and bumps. It's wrinkly. It's wrinkly. Mm -hmm. okay? And we have a name for these bumps and grooves, of course, because why wouldn't we name them? Um, and they are going to be the gyri, which are going to be the bumps actually sticking out. The high convolutions. The, uh, <laughs> fancy words. Fancy there. word. Mm -hmm. It's fancy and word. And then the sulci, or singular is the sulcus which are going to be the grooves, the indentations. Do you have a fancy word for that? No. All right, well, nice try. <laughs> <laughs> so if we look at the brain from this angle, you can see there are two hemispheres, okay? So there's two sides of the brain. There's the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And they're gonna be separated by a really long indentation that's called the longitudinal fissure. So our left hemisphere is gonna be the one that's prominently going to be doing math and logic and the right side is going to be responsible for art and emotions and that whole spatial side of the brain. So if we look kind of at the bottom of the cerebrum, we see that at the bottom there is kind of a mini brain on the bottom. That's called the cerebellum. Now the cerebellum is separated from the cerebrum by the transverse fissure. So there's a line going through there that is the transverse fissure. So if we look back at the top of our cerebrum, there are four lobes to the brain that correspond with bones that we've already learned and muscles that we've already learned. Starting with the front, which is the frontal. frontal right? So we have the frontal lobe at the front. Then we have the parietal bone, or bone. The lobe. bone is a lobe, right? Right, the bone As protects the lobe. True. Right. Right, and then on the posterior side-ish, we have the occipital lobe. So that's back there here. Go. And then the temporal lobe on the side. There go. So the same exact ones we've been looking at for right. our bones. Right, and oh. the muscles. And muscles, everything. Everything. And these are one things we're not trying to trick you with. Now, if we look again at the top, or even from that angle, I guess we can see the central sulcus. I'm going to turn it around so okay. the brain is facing you. So if we look kind of down an angle, there you go. The central sulcus is going to cut right between the frontal lobe and the parietal lobes. So that's going to separate the two. And we have a large gyrus on either side. The pre-central, which is going to be in front, and the post-central, which is going to be in the back. Now our pre-central is also going to be responsible for our motor. So this is where we consciously send signals to move our arms. And then the post-central is going to be receiving all of our conscious sensory information. Now if we flip this guy over, we can look at the bottom of the brain, which is going to start up on the frontal lobe. We have the olfactory bulbs. These are going to be kind of connected with our nasal cavity and start receiving scent. And as we look at the kind of chopped optic nerves, right there, the optic nerves are going to be coming from the eye, and I'm going to move our pituitary gland out of the way, so you can see the optic chiasma. That's this X in the middle. Right in the center. And so the optic nerves are going to hit the optic chiasma and then follow the optic track back into the occipital lobe where we can register our um, What we're seeing, looking at. Right? Yeah. So then the part that I moved aside, I guess we can look at that, that's going to be our pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is attached to the brain by the infundibulum, which is kind of the white stalk we can see on this brain here. Hey, Marsha. Hey, what? You know that this pituitary gland sits in the cella tersica? What? Way of the sphenoid bone. Man, that cradle's there for a reason. This is our Turk in his saddle. <laughs> <laughs> what a good guy. <laughs> so that also is going to have two parts to it. A posterior pituitary and an anterior pituitary. You learn all kinds of hormones that go for me. Oh, you can welcome to 245. Yay. That'll be the fun one. Um, and then kind of right under that, you can see there are two small bumps. Those are going to be the mammillary bodies connected to the hypothalamus. 
Now the other part we can see from this angle, we'll open it up to see the inside, is our brain stem. Uh, the brain stem is made of three parts. The midbrain, which is closest to our cerebrum. The pons, which looks like a great big bump. And then the medulla oblongata, which is just really fun to say. It is fun. I it's do. my favorite. I enjoy it. <laughs> All right. I think we are going to open it up then. So stay tuned for video number next. Ooh.